Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Welcome to the Ontario, Canada Raw Review. <laughs> um, what was this show about? I believe this show was trying to give huge amounts of interest in different directions, and the show was not that great. There were some interesting things done in the show, but this show was not great. The WWE, I'm saying this clearly, and I may leave this in my, my, my title. Too much interest messes the product. I don't know if I'm going to use that title, but I'm just saying this. The WWE is trying to hype up Payback. They're trying to hype up what's going on with Triple H. They're trying to hype up so many different things that they oversaturated everything. And the WWE app is not helping. The WWE app, having to see everything while you're trying to watch the product, it's stupid. When the product isn't on, show it, WWE. Not while the product is going on on your shows. This is what people are... are, are I've already done this three times, ladies and gentlemen, because this frustrates me so badly. The WWE app should only be used when the show is not on. By trying to see what's going on during the show and seeing what's going on during the app, I mean, while the show is going on in the app, it's too much. The thing that people don't understand, when you used to see wrestling, you didn't always see what was going on behind the scenes. You didn't always see anything until they did the promo segments and the pre-tapes that you wouldn't normally see. Seeing it live is interesting, yes, but when you do it every single time on every show, and even though it's a pre-taped show of SmackDown, and then there's a pre-taped show on I, and then there's a pre-taped show on Saturday, Saturday Morning Slam, and then Superstars, and then NXT, it is too much stuff to take in. And with this oversaturation, the show just so badly diluted. The beginning of the show, people wanted to hear and see Brent. But we got Cena. And Cena even... He pretty much addresses this, saying, I know you guys want to see it, but we got to take care of this business first. No! The people want to see the person that is from their own hometown of, Ante of Calgary, Ontario, Canada. You show the man. No matter if you're interested in the man or not. That's what your crowd wants. And they didn't give it. So what was the point of the promo segment for Cena? Three stages of hell. Only Triple H usually does those matches. Does this mean I'm interested in it? No. Because Cena came back after eight days. This wouldn't be bad if it was done in Money in the Bank. That's the pay-per-view after, after um, payback. That would have been more interesting. To see John Cena back after a month would have been a lot better than seeing him back after eight days where during the show, he had to go and have a fight with Curtis Axel, who I'll get to in a moment. But this is what's going on, and it's, I just didn't buy it. And I don't even know if the match is going to be good. It probably, that, that three stages of hell match will probably be interesting. And they're going to, I'll probably do a pay-per-view predictions on it. But I really didn't buy John Cena. Now, Curtis Axel. He had his segment with John Cena, which was bad. He had his segment with Bret Hart, which wasn't bad at all. The match itself, short. The match wasn't even about him, but he was allowed to get the win, which I'm glad. You got to put the guy over. The only thing this was about was about Ryback attacking John Cena from behind. Ryback was a monster. He didn't need to attack anyone from behind. Nothing. And then trying to see him put... Calm myself. I don't want to have to redo this a fourth time. Seeing Ryback trying to plow John Cena through the LED lights to go into the back again. And then John Cena putting him on his shoulders to do an AA. It would have been easier... For me to believe it, if John Cena hadn't tried to put him in the AA. Just didn't believe it. Once he did that. I just didn't believe it. But it's still something to building. But like I said, when you oversaturate something, you lose interest. 
I know they haven't oversaturated too much with this feud, but the way they structured the feud and now how they're pushing it sucks. Really does. Now I'm going to get to Triple H. I want to do this quickly. Triple H and his condition. They showed what happened to Triple H during the match. When the doc asked him anything you remember, he says, just my entrance. Doesn't remember anything else. Cole's saying pretty much he's fine. He'll be back next week. The question is, what are they going to do with Triple H now? Are they going to have him face Brock again? Are they going to have him go after someone else? Or are they just going to let him talk and then go away again? I have some interest in this because he did put over Curtis Axel. So the most obvious person for him to go after would be Curtis Axel. And that wouldn't be bad for, for payback if they structure it right. But I don't know. I mean, they want to put over Triple H so much that it would have been better for him to actually job to Curtis Axel. I know not many people want to hear that. God cannot just job. But it would be better. That's how I feel about it. And with Curtis Axel, I have just one last thing I want to say. I really believe they should have done this at least two years ago with Curtis Axel. Yeah, they tweaked his music when he came out with John Cena, which I felt the music was fine before. I really liked it the way it was before. I just, I just feel like it, it should have left it the way it was because it was a much more better homage to Kurt Henning, his dad, and to him. Now moving on to the WWE app and what happened with the Miz. Miz segment. Choosing is he going to be a ref, commentator, or announcer? Oh, I knew 100%. I'm sure everyone else did. He was going to be a ref because this has got to be part of the feud, and he was. The WWE app being shoved down my throat is making me angry. Err. Almost ready to scream. That's one of the reasons why I had to do this three times, ladies and gentlemen, because I couldn't stand it. So what do we get? We get a short match that Fandango gets the win because his goal crushing finale was put on Wade. But then Fandango gets the win, but the one who wins the most is Summer Rae because Fandango gets his head knocked off. Summer falls forward and back. I don't know how. And then lays on top of Fandango, which you lay on top of me. Well, sort of, I still love my Naomi. I will be getting to her later, but <laughs> she gets to win. That was the only interesting thing there. I mean, it wasn't great interest, but it was interesting. Now, I'm sure they're going to do a triple threat for the championship. I'm just hoping they don't do it before payback. Please, WWE, don't be foolish enough to do this on a pre-show or your regular show. Do this on the pay-per-view and people will be interested. People still like The Miz. People are not sure about Wade Barrett. Fandango's coming up. Do this on your paper. You and all three of them will get over. Even if you have to have the Miz win or Fandango win or even Wade. At least it'll be something different. So we move on. To. Hmm. I'm going to make this short because I'm combining two matches at the same time. Kopi and Dean Ambrose. Good match. Dean wins. End. After the match, Hell No comes out. And I wish to say that they're really pushing Daniel Bryan. And I have a thought about that in a minute. Because we saw what happened with him and Brent along with Kane. Segment wasn't very funny. It was interesting. But it wasn't funny. Now the match itself was good. The crowd loved the match. They started screaming, this is awesome. And it was a good match. At the end, the person who loses is Kane again. Daniel Bryan loses at Extreme Rules, and now Kane has jobbed twice to the Shield. Now, does this mean this is going to cause more conflict between Hell No? I don't think so. The way they're showing Daniel Bryan and during the show with Bret Hart, and before that, the last week of SmackDown, and unfortunately because of my allergy problems, I've been very sick. So I was not even able to see SmackDown. I was so sick. So... From what I can understand from seeing other people's um, reviews of it, they're really trying to push Daniel Bryan. I really believe they're not going to have much of a conflict between Hell No. If I'm wrong, fine. I don't mind being wrong. But the way it is, I think they're just going to break them apart without a fight, and they're going to push Daniel Bryan more. They're going to push Kane. And seeing Kane as the voice of reasons feels weird. 
Kane is a monster. And I'm sure NJ is not fond of seeing Kane as the one with the sense of calmness right now. Kane is the one that's supposed to be the monster destroyer, the brother of destruction. Why are we gonna do it like this for him? Why is he the one that has the job so badly? So that's how I feel about that. But I did like the match. Now the next thing I'm gonna bring up is, hmm, um, I'm bringing in, I'm gonna get this over with, Natalia. Now, I'm gonna combine two more matches again. I better, I might, have, might as well, because when I did it before, I got angry. Seeing 3MB versus Kali and, as they call themselves, tons of fun. I call them the Dancing Giants of Clay and Tensai. Clay gets a win. This is all because of the WWE app and Hornswoggle getting... Calm down. Getting cake in his face. As I said, oversaturation, no interest. It's no even any reason even look. But the thing about this is not about the match itself. It was about Natalia having Kali sing happy birthday. And what was going on with Tensai going like, hey, uh, hey. You shouldn't have did that. It, 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 makes, it looks like it might be a conflict when there isn't one. But anyway, seeing Natalia get a happy birthday with everybody around her, her friends, her family, the crowd was nice. Seeing the Bellas against Caitlyn and Natalia was terrible. I've already expressed my feelings about the Bellas. They're going after the titles. One of them is going after the title. That's the reason why Caitlyn was even in the match. And Caitlyn has now changed her clothes. She's not wearing pants. She's wearing tights. At least this time around. Her boobies were sticking out. They may not be big. They look nice though. But the point is that Natalia was the one that had the job here, not Caitlyn. And then you see Natalia crying in the middle of the ring after the Bellas sing. Look, they let Randy Orton get two back-to-back -back wins, and I believe one of those wins was in St. Louis. Why not a Natalia? She's a diva. She's not a male wrestler. She couldn't have a win in her own, in her own city, her own town of Ontario, Canada, Calgary. This is just how they did before when they made a fart before. They couldn't even give her something that she deserved. She's been sticking there all these years. She should have gone to TNA. But she didn't get it and that just sucked. Now, um, I'm moving on to the Jericho and Heyman, which was okay. I enjoyed it until I heard them talk about CM Punk. And one, CM Punk has only been away for six weeks, a month and a half. Why are they trying to push him back so quickly? And why must it be a Chris Jericho? They have nothing for Chris to do, so they're gonna have him go up against the same person he was facing twice already? In a CM Punk? Seriously? I don't wanna see a CM Punk and a Chris Jericho match again. Not saying they can't do good matches, but I've already seen it. It's almost to the point of a Daniel Bryan. Really? It's almost to the point of Daniel Bryan and CM Punk because they face each other so much now. Now seeing that he's going to be coming back in three weeks, I'm hoping he won't go and pay back. I was waiting to see him at Money in the Bank the latest. But now, I really feel they're rushing him back and they have absolutely nothing for Chris Jericho to, move, to do and I feel sorry for Chris, honestly. It was funny the way he was talking. Funny about the best in the world. And the beer, blah, 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 blah. it wasn't bad. But seeing that just wasn't right. So, um, let's see what's left. Um, the last thing I can honestly say about the next match was I wasn't interested, I was bored. Seeing ADR and Biggie Langston. Seeing Biggie job again when he won. ADR won on Wednesday night main event. I didn't feel any interest. When I found out he was going, he was on Wednesday night main event, there was nothing there. Nothing. 
So, when this match came around, nothing. It just kind of teases a little conflict between AJ and Biggie. And then seeing Dolph on the WWE app, and I say it again, it's oversaturated. I'm totally bored with it. I am bored with this. I'm tired of seeing the app. I am bored with the app. There's no point in even looking at Raw. There's no point in looking at SmackDown or any other shows. Put everything on, on the WWE website and charge people to see it there. There's no point in having it on network if you're going to be like this WWE. I, I just... Eh. So, let me see if I'm forgetting anything. Talking about... Uh, I believe I talked about everything... Only thing I can say lastly about what's going on with Cena and Ryback, and I'm sure I said this early in the beginning of, the, of my review. Do I believe that Payback is going to be a good match? Do I believe that Three Stages of Hell is going to be a good match? Honestly, the hyping right now, no. The possible triple threat between Miz, Fandango, and Wade, I might be hyped for it a little bit. If they structure it right, not try to do it before the show or on the pre-show. If they do it on the pre-show, it's stupid. If they do it before the pay-per-view, it's stupid. So I'm hoping they won't. So my rating for this, I'm giving it like a C+. I really wasn't super hyped for this show. It was great to hear the crowd. Don't get me wrong. I love the crowd. The crowd was good. The crowd cheered for the people they liked. And oh, I almost forgot. Rogue Scholars. This is how much I got upset because of the app, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very sorry. Rogue Scholars versus Orton and Sheamus. Orton and Sheamus wins. Rogue Scholars get buried again. And I feel like they're going to be going up, up against the Shield to get the tag titles. That is a possibility. That's my feeling right now. I really feel that Hell No is going to fade off and Team... Sheamus and team, well, Sheamus and Orton are the ones that's going after the title now. They're the only ones that's credible. I'm still giving this a C plus though. There wasn't that much hyping for this coming up pay-per-view. I know it's still early, but you could give me something. I just got one thing. And that's a triple threat possibility for the IC Championship. So I hope you enjoyed the Zane's view. Subscribe and comment to my... <coughs> Sorry, allergies. Ugh. You have no idea how bad it is in New York with the pollen count. It is high, even with the crazy weather. I hope you like this review. <coughs> and I hope you subscribe and comment to my show. I'm sorry I couldn't get out SmackDown, but I will be trying to do my best. And I'll see if I can do um, a debate of the week on The Shield or on Curtis Axel. Have a good day.